I want to start by asking everybody here to imagine someone in your life that just drives you crazy, <laughs> right? We all have one of these people. And, and the thing is, they often don't even mean to drive us crazy. It's just part of their personality. It's just something that we do. So this might be someone that you work with. This might be someone that's in your family. This might even be your best friend from time to time. So I want you to imagine this person, and I want you to hold in your imagination that thing that they do that just sets you off, because we're going to come back to these folks in a little bit. When we're set off, we lose our personal power. We lose the power to manage our temper. We lose the power to maintain our composure and our poise. We lose the skill and the power to not do and say things we are going to regret later. So now I want you to imagine this person again, this problematic person, this person that drives you crazy, this person that sets you off. And I want you to imagine yourself interacting with this person with perfect composure, patience. You don't lose your temper. You've got complete skill. You've got your power. What I want to do is introduce you to an idea, a two-part idea, the personal shadow and shadow projection. And these are concepts that were developed by Swiss psychologist Carl Jung over 100 years ago, but they are still incredibly relevant and important for us today in order for us to maintain skillful interpersonal interactions with difficult people. So let's talk about this first part, the personal shadow. The personal shadow, in a nutshell, are all those parts of our personality that we push out of our awareness. We deny that they're there. We don't want to admit to them. We don't see them. And it's part of childhood. It's perfectly normal to have a personal shadow. If you've ever felt embarrassment, you've got a shadow. In fact, personal and psychological shadows naturally form when people form groups, when people become part of communities, and especially when people grow up in families. In fact, getting a shadow is a, is a big part of learning really important values and virtues as we grow up as children. So I'll ask you guys a question. We'll start with this. How many of us grew up in helpful households? We were taught to be helpful. Our parents were helpful, right? I can see there's a lot of us out there. My parents were very much like this. They volunteered time in civic organizations. They helped out people at church. And when you were growing up in my house, if everybody else was doing something, you jumped in. You couldn't just sit around while everybody else worked. And I like being helpful. I like helping someone out. I like helping people solve problems. It makes me feel good. Being helpful is a virtue, it's a value. We need more of it in this world. Now, at the same time, though, I want to ask all of us helpful people, how difficult, no, how impossible is it for us to say no when somebody asks us for a favor? Right. Because we're afraid. We're afraid that if we say no, this person might suffer. Or we're, we're really afraid of is if we say no, they're not going to love us as much. They're not going to like us as much. So we fear saying no. One thing that helpful people put in their shadow is their ability to draw a boundary and say no to other people. So even when we don't have time to do this favor, even when it's going to compromise something else, we're still afraid to say no. And so we say yes. And maybe one day suddenly somebody asks us for a favor and we just explode. Now let me ask the same, those helpful people, how many of us find it impossible to actually ask for help ourselves? Same problem, we're afraid. We're afraid if I ask for help, I'm going to be a burden. I'm going to burden other people. So even though I provide help to people all the time, even if I'm in the weeds and completely overwhelmed, I'm afraid to ask for help because helpful people put their ability to ask for help into their shadows. It's a socially risky thing to grow up in a helpful household and say no to people. It's a socially risky thing to be a helpful person and need help. We'll do another virtue, another value. Politeness, kindness, respect, right? This is something that we all want to raise kids with. This is something that's an important virtue in the world. Politeness is a way of loving everybody 
by treating them well. And so some of us have been raised in very polite houses where politeness and respect was the law. So you might be sitting at a dinner table and your grandfather might come in and goes, hey, I talked to a guy and he had a three-headed dog. And you're like, uh, sure, because you're not going to disagree with him. So now how many of us helpful and polite people find it very difficult to tell somebody something we know they don't want to hear? becomes very difficult to speak your truth, to say what you feel, to say what you really think or what you really want if you've spent your whole life being polite and kind. We end up being these people pleasers. Polite people put their ability to speak their truth into the shadow. Now, the shadow is a defense for children. It's a defense against being shamed. It's a defense against being reprimanded. So we push all these socially risky parts of ourselves into the shadow and pretend they're not there. But obviously, being an adult means you have to be honest and you have to be polite. You have to be helpful and you also need to know when to set a boundary and say no. And you especially need to know when it's time to ask for help yourself. So the problem or the challenge with this uh, defense of our childhood is it becomes an obstacle to becoming an adult. This brings us to those people that set us off and the second part of this idea, which is shadow projection. Now, let's say you have your really helpful person and she's working with some other people and they're all working to solve this big problem and they're working really hard and they see somebody, she sees someone walk by and she's like, hey, we could really use some help. Can you give us a hand? Can you help us out with this? And someone, the person says, no, I, I can't. I don't have time. I got to go. So now the helpful person's just seething. You know, I wish I could just blow people off. I wish I didn't care when other people were in need, but I'm not selfish. I am helpful. Right? And she's been set off now by someone who didn't really do anything to her. Right? She's lost her power. Let's look at the polite person. Here's the polite person. He's a young man sitting in a college class and he's listening to the professor lecture and a student raises a hand and starts to disagree with the professor. Different point of view. And so they're disagreeing. Now maybe the student's being professional about it too. You know, not being disrespectful but being assertive. But the polite young man, he's seething. You know, I wish I could just say whatever I wanted to and blow off people's feelings and not care what they think and not care what they feel, but I'm not rude. I'm polite. I wasn't raised that way. So now let's think about some of these people that set us off without meaning to. Because there's a very good chance that what they're showing us is something we've been trained to be afraid of, something about ourselves we've been taught to fear. We put unmet needs into our shadow. And then when we see somebody who's not afraid to meet them, we get really set off. You can tell when this is happening because outwardly you disapprove of what the person's doing. I can't believe they're doing that. I can't believe they're talking like that. But secretly, your shadow envies it. So when you tell yourself, gee, I wish I could just blow off the day and, and just take the day off. I wish I could just be a big slacker. Part of you probably really does believe that. But there's some fear behind it. I can't tell you how many times I've heard the story of the really ambitious story, the really ambitious student who has a slacker roommate who's laying on the couch all day and it just makes the ambitious student so mad. And this person's not doing anything to them except showing them that they're afraid to relax. So one of the things that we push into our shadow are unmet needs. Have you ever had that moment where you meet somebody for the first time and you're just completely convinced they don't like you? I know this person doesn't like me. I, I, I just know it. And then you go up and talk to them and like, why don't you like me? And they say, well, I, don't, I think you're fine. I don't understand what the, what was the, what's the problem. So often, one of the things that we project on other people, besides unmet needs, is we project our own self-judgment. We judge ourselves and then accuse somebody else of judging us. 
So now I might come home and my, my spouse has said, can you get to the dishes after you get home? And I say, yeah, sure, I'll get to the dishes. But first I get on Facebook and then I mess around and then I go walk the dog. And at the last 15 or so minutes, I'm rushing to do the dishes and maybe I do like a semi-decent job. And then I'm like, okay, I've done it now. And then she comes home and she says, did you, did you do the dishes? And I'm like, of course I did the dishes. What do you think I was doing all day? And she's like, uh, I don't know, I was just asking, right? How often do we feel judged without really knowing the person's judging us? And how often is that actually just us being afraid to look a little bit deeper into ourselves? Here's another piece of shadow projection that's very common. We all have these moments that we're not particularly proud of. We might have been a little petty. We might have been a little greedy. We might have been maybe a know-it-all, some arrogance. There's, there's all these little bits of ourselves, and we're like, no, I'm not really like that. I'm not like that. I'm not like that. But then we see somebody who's not afraid to show their greed or their pettiness or their shine, and it just sets us off. Right? So I work at a university and everybody's obviously very smart and so I might be in a room and a colleague could come in and he might start talking and suddenly I'm hearing myself say, God, this guy's such a know-it-all, he's so arrogant, he's such a know-it-all, I just can't believe it because I'm projecting my arrogance and my know-it-all onto him. And now I've made him doubly bad. Now he's twice a know-it-all. Now he's double arrogant. And now I have license to treat him poorly because I can't see him clearly. So another piece of our shadow is the pieces that we project is taking a step back and owning up to some of our lesser angels. So now if I want to walk around with lots of fear and lots of anger, because that's what we're doing when we project. We're afraid to see something in ourselves, and so we get very aggressive towards the person that we project on. This is why we get set off. This is why we lose that sense of personal power. So now if I can just step back and say, all right, there's my colleague, and he's kind of being an arrogant know-it-all, and sometimes so am I. Now I can own my shadow. I can claim my shadow. I don't have to project it on him. And I might also go, you know, I wonder what makes him that way. Why does he feel he has to assert himself? When, I've, when we stop feeling aggressive towards people who are bullies. Everybody who's been a bully has been bullied. Everybody who's been harshly criti is a harshly critical person has been harshly criticized. So when I can defuse that shadow projection, I can stop looking at these folks. We can all stop looking at these folks aggressively and actually start to see them with some compassion. And go, I wonder what made that person into a bully. I wonder who gave that person that shadow. So I want to give you some, some takeaways here. And here's our first one. When we become critical for people, for just being themselves, when we literally take someone's personality personally, it may point to something about ourselves that we need to own up to. When we find ourselves both disapproving and yet envying another's behavior, that may point to an unmet need within the shadow. And it's a need that we have to meet in a healthy, conscious way. If I learn how to speak up more in conversations, I won't resent a friend who sort of tends to hog the spotlight. If I learn how to break a few rules, I won't get set off by somebody else who does. If I learn how to relax, I won't get mad at my roommate who's always laying on the couch. When we feel judged by others, especially if they haven't come right out and said exactly what it is they're judging us about, it may point to a judgment that we may actually have about ourselves. The more we become aware of our shadows, the more personal power we hold. The more we become aware of our shadows, the less anger and the less fear we experience around other people. And the more we understand and become aware of our shadows, the less power difficult people will have to set us off. Thank you very much.